Hello everyone, welcome back to The Connection. It has been a while since we have put a, a connection on due to the holidays and just a lot of things going on and work and different situations, but we are back here today. Hope you are doing good, hoping you are blessed beyond measure because you are blessed. No matter what you're facing today, we know that we are blessed and we are facing a lot of things. If you're keeping up with things that are happening in the world today, it is chaos. It is chaos. Just like Jesus said, he said in the last days there'll be wars and there'll be rumors of wars. And we've got um, wars taking place and we got other things that are going on with Iran and Israel. And I, I told the church uh, a few weeks ago, I said here in 2023, the uh, country to keep your eyes on is Israel. Because whatever happens in Israel affects the rest of the world. Because Jerusalem, as you know, is the exact center of the world and Jerusalem is right there in the midst of it all God's people God's city and of course events in the end times revolve around Jerusalem and Israel so they are the ones to keep your eyes on and they're the ones that we need to be praying for it's very clear that the Lord told Abraham he said I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you so right now we're seeing you know, Iran's becoming very, very uh, bold and brassy, of course, with their alliances with Turkey and Russia and several others. You know, it's just kind of they're, they're, they're feeling uh, pretty brave and bold and a lot of things happening right there. But uh, it's all end time stuff, folks. It just read your Bible and get in it and dig in it and look and you'll find that all these things that are happening are end time events. So we are living in the last days. Um I'm excited about this Sunday's message. I'll be preaching about spiritual authority and uh, a lot of things in the message that has to do kind of with where we are right now in the world. So, but uh, right now we're going to go into your world, whatever's going on at your house and in your life and in your mind. And I want to talk to you today about the battle. It, you know, as Christians, we understand that we 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 we're warriors. We go to war. We we battle. And I know for maybe some of you it feels like that. That's all you ever do is just go from one battle to another. But um, and you know that is another sign of the times. You know when when Daniel begins to speak about you know the last days and begins to speak about the things that the church is going to face. The Bible said that the enemy would wear out the saints of the Most High God, and and that seems to be where we are right now. There is a tremendous amount of pressure that is coming against the church. I mean, we're we're dealing with with ridiculous things. I mean, things that you know to to the to the mature mind and to the level-headed mind and to just the the common man to look and think the idea of some of these what they call elites, you know, it is ridiculous the stuff that they're trying to just force feed us and trying to make us you know, change our way of life and our Judeo-Christian values and all these things that are taking place. And and right now, I'll, I'll be honest, to, to, to be a real outspoken Christian is not popular. I mean, it, when, when was Christianity ever popular, to be honest? I mean, it wasn't because it went against the, the ag agenda and the grain of what the enemy's idea was for this fallen world. And, uh, you know, so so here we are today, we're engaged in the battle. We're dealing with stuff, and, and there's a few things as we go. And then this, of course, this is a short little, you know, program we're doing today, and I, I hope to keep it short. Um, but, you know, talking about the battle, you know, if, if we're facing anything today, anything in your life at all, you always need to go to the Scripture. The Scripture is the source of life, strength, power. Jesus said the Word was bread, the Word was water, the Word was life, the Word was truth. So, if we're going to find any kind of truth in the world at all, we've got to find it in the Word of God. So if we're going to find what we need to sustain us and give us strength and give us energy, spiritual energy, to go through these things that we're facing, we've got to go to the Word of God. So there's a couple of elements I want to talk about, a couple of things. When you talk about uh, being in the battle, in 2 Kings chapter 6, read a very interesting portion of Scripture there where... Um, Elijah's kind of, uh, Elisha, excuse me, um, every time the king of Syria is going to go do something to Israel, uh, of course, Elisha, through the Spirit of God, knows what's going to happen before it happens. And he's always warning the king, is, don't, king of Israel, don't go down here, don't go here, don't go there. And he would avoid a conflict by listening to the man of God. So the king of Syria said, I've had enough. He said, we're going to go get the prophet and we're going we're to finish him off and, and do all this kind of stuff. And so the Bible said it was told that he was in Dothan. 
So the king sends his army down there. And in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 13 through 18, you'll find the, uh, the story that in the middle of the night, the Assyrian army surrounds the city of Dothan and um, the man of God's servant wakes up first in the morning and looks out there and they are surrounded by the enemy. And he goes running into Elisha and he says, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He said, man, what are we going to do? I mean, there, to him, it looked like there was no way of escape. What are we going to do? So the first thing that Elijah says to him is this. Do not fear. Do not fear. And I know you may be saying, but that's hard. And it, it is at times. It surely is hard at times not to be afraid. I mean, there's so many scriptures in the Bible. I think somebody said 367, you know, something like that on commandments in the Bible to not fear. And uh, sometimes it's really hard when you're facing things that you don't know how to get out of. Like the servant was here. He, he was afraid. He was afraid. But Elijah said, do not fear. And he, I love what he said next. He said, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. He said, I want you to know something right now. He said, you got more with you than you got against you. And then Elisha says, Lord, open up his eyes that he may see. And then it says, then the Lord opened up his eyes. The Lord opened up his eyes. And what did he see? He seen what the man of God seen. He seen the hills were surrounded by the armies of the living God. Now, what's interesting here, and of course, the Bible doesn't tell you this, but when you begin to study the geography of where Dothan was located, the ancient city of Dothan, and where the armies of Syria were located, you find out that the armies of the Lord were standing in between the city and the enemy army. The, the the host of Israel, the host of the Lord, the, the armies of the living God, were not standing on the outside surrounding the enemy. They were standing in between Elisha and his servant and the enemy. That's why, and that's where God is today. God's not standing on the outside of your battle. He is standing between you and the enemy. That's where God has positioned himself. So that's why Elisha said, Hey, hey man, we don't have to be scared. Just see what I see. And God opened his eyes and he seen what the prophet could see. And, you know, and it, it, it is a war of our faith right now because there's maybe some of your ass says, well, I, I can't see you. I've been praying, Lord, open my eyes. Or maybe you've been praying, Lord, help me to see beyond this thing. And maybe you're happy, you're struggling with it. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. It is a fight of faith. We have to understand that, that everything that we do as Christians it, we, evolves around faith because we were born by faith. We believed upon Jesus Christ. We believed for salvation. We believe for the Spirit of God. You know, so everything there is about us, you know, we're born in faith, born by faith. So it is a fight of faith. So Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. And, you know, the thing of it is we, don't, we never have to go looking for a fight. You know, it, I'll just be honest with you. Those, those believers or Christians, you here saying, I'm just looking for me a good devil to whoop. But let me tell you something. You ain't got to look far. You'll find it. You don't have to go looking for a fight. The enemy will bring the fight to you. And that's what the enemy did here. The enemy brought the fight to Elisha. But the solution to ridding the servant of his fear was that God opened his eyes and he seen what Elisha seen. So that's the first step. If we're going to fight the good fight of faith and if we're going to be strong and we're going to be uh, vigilant and all these extremes that are taking place in the world and the battles that are coming against us. First of all, we need to say, God, open my eyes and let me see the reality of this. Not not the reality of what the enemy's reality is or what somebody else may look and what they may see, but Lord, let me see it from your reality. And he saw, and he saw that the the armies of God were not standing on the outside of the enemy. They were standing in between him and the enemy. So that's where God is today. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we got to learn how to stand. We got to learn how to stand. When Israel's coming out of Egypt and, you know, the whole story there, 
the Lord did not take them by the route of the Philistines. Instead, the Bible said he carried him down in toward the, the Red Sea. And, and, you know, by some, uh, you know, tacticians, military tacticians would look and say, wow, that's a horrible, horrible uh, way to go because they were basically trapped between the sea and the desert. And, uh, but you know, the thing about God is that God is this, you know, God is always, God is a God of awe and wonder and surprise. So let me tell you something, if you're following after God today, if you ever get in a situation where other people say, oh, wow, that's bad, you're trapped. God knows what he's doing, folks. Look at the history of God. Look at the history of the Bible and the people of God. And how many times the Lord got them trapped or got them in a situation or impossibility that he just revealed his power. God's, God's in control of everything. God's in control of every single detail of your life if you're following him and you're submitting to him. So, you know, so let's go back to what Elijah told his servant. He said, stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. So, but they were afraid. You know, that's the natural human reaction. When we're walking by flesh and not by faith, of course, we end up being afraid. So, you know, here they are. They're, they're basically trapped between Pharaoh and the Red Sea. And the first thing that God says to them in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 is, stand still. Stand still. Now, the word stand in that text is very, very interesting because it means commit yourself. Commit yourself. Now, that's powerful. That that right there is extremely powerful. Not because I'm saying it, but because the word of God says it. He says it to them. He said, commit yourself and see, here we go back to vision again, the salvation of the Lord. I love that. Commit yourself and see. Before you could ever see what God sees or the reality of God, you've got to commit yourself. You've got to commit yourself to trusting God. You've got to commit yourself to serving God. You've got to commit yourself to putting your whole faith in God before you ever see the hand of God move. It was easy to be a believer after you have seen something, but to commit yourself before the battle begins or before God moves his hand and parts the Red Seas or before God does anything to commit yourself. That's powerful. He said, commit yourself. In other words, I want to see the committed people. I want to see the people who are really following me. I want to see the people who are really trusting me to really take a stand for the things of God. The thing of it is right now we look at, you know, and I'm sorry to say this is, this is absolutely pathetic to be able to say this, but just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian. We have a lot of people that say they're a Christian and the stuff they stand for and the things they allow behind their pulpit and the things that they're saying is pathetic. It's sad. It's pathetic and it's dangerous. So to be a true believer of God, to be a believer of Jesus Christ, when you commit yourself, it is not just in the good times, it's in the bad times, not just when it's popular, but when it's unpopular. When you're going against the grain, when you're going against the leftist agenda or the secularist, if you're going against this, this one world government idea, when you're standing against those things, you're saying, listen, I commit myself to following Jesus Christ. And then he said, and see the salvation of the Lord. And God opened up the Red Sea and they escaped and God drowned every one of their enemies, their entire past was buried in the in the Red Sea. If we want to have that same experience, we have got to stand still, commit ourselves, and follow after God. And then in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, uh, or chapter 20, our reference verses verse 17, Jehoshaphat is basically facing the same thing. They've got three armies that are coming against them. And, you know, he's very honest with the Lord. He said, Lord, he said, first of all, he said, we have no might against this company. In other words, we don't have the military power to go out there and face these three armies. And then he said something that is very, very powerful too. He said, and we just don't know what to do. <laughs> you ever been there? Yeah, I know you have. We've all been there. And we may all be there in the future. But he said, Lord, he said, we don't have the might. We don't have the, we don't have the resources. We don't have the, you know, what it takes. We don't have the right thing to deal with this threat. 
He said, and be honest, Lord, he said, we really don't know what to do. But this is the key. This is the key word that changes everything. But our eyes, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Our eyes are on you. In other words, Lord, from a human standpoint, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> but you, oh, but our eyes eyes are upon you. There's a vision again. Our eyes are upon you. And do you know what the Lord told them? He said, stand, stand still, stand still. He told them that again, stand. But you know what the word stand means in this, this scripture? In Hebrew, it means to wait, to continue, or to endure. He said, you know what? He said, Jehoshaphat, I'm going to move. He said, but there's something you got to do first. You got to endure. You got to endure the part or the space from when you got the word until the word comes to pass. But did God deliver them from the battle? Yes, he did. So vision is important when we're dealing with battles. And to stand is important too. To commit ourselves and to wait and continue and to endure until we see God move. And that's that's the thing. God's going to move. God is going to move. And when God does move, when God begins to work and God begins to have his way, then you're going to be like Jehoshaphat. You're going to come out there and all you're going to do is pick up the spoil that is left over from the battle that God ensued with the enemy. So you know what? Be of good cheer today. Be of good cheer. Let your heart rejoice. Let your mind stay on the things of God. Get your spirit out of a place of fear. Don't, don't you know, we hear shortages and, and this, this government that we have right now, it's bankrupting and bankrupting and ruining the, ruining the country and inflation destroys economies and you know the thing of it is it's all plots and plans that's been in place for a long long time and we're winding down folks we're winding down but we have a great hope <laughs> the 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 liberals are looking for a great reset christians believers in jesus christ the remnant are looking for a great hope and we have a great hope and that hope is jesus christ that hope is our salvation. That hope is heaven. Folks, let me tell you something. There is nothing greater. Everything that we're doing down here means nothing if we have not set our sights on heaven. So a great escape is coming. It's called the rapture. Hang on until it gets there and endure. Commit yourself and watch God fight your battle for you. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you today. If you're not a subscriber, if you're coming here for the first time and you enjoy the video, please subscribe to it. Hit the bell notification. Uh, give us a thumbs up every time that we put one of these posts on or we put our Sunday sermon message on. You will get that. And and by, the, by doing that, you will be a part of our family. We love and appreciate every one of you. We pray God blesses you. God goes with you. Be safe and keep looking up. God bless you.